This lesson will cover tachycardia for pediatric advanced life support. First, we'll discuss how to recognize tachycardia in children and infants. Tachycardia occurs when the heart rate is greater than what is considered normal for a child's age, and it can be life-threatening. The ventricles are unable to fill completely, so cardiac output is lowered. The coronary arteries receive less blood, so supply to the heart is decreased. The signs and symptoms of tachycardia include respiratory distress or failure, poor tissue perfusion, altered mental state, pulmonary edema, and congestion, and a weak, rapid pulse. There are five types of pediatric tachycardia. These include sinus tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and ventricular tachycardia. For narrow QRS complexes, atrial flutter is an uncommon rhythm distinguished on an ECG as a sawtooth pattern. It is caused by an abnormal reentrant pathway that causes the atria to beat very quickly and ineffectively. Contractions may exceed 300 beats per minute, but not all will reach the AV node and cause a ventricular contraction. This chart differentiates narrow QRS complex, wide QRS complex, sinus tachycardia, and supraventricular tachycardia. Now let's talk about wide QRS complex. Ventricular tachycardia is uncommon in children and usually fatal. Do not delay treatment for VTAC. Any of these rhythms can develop into V-fib. Generally, P waves are lost or disassociated from the QRS complex during VTAC. Figure 9 demonstrates fusion beats, a sign of ventricular tachycardia. These are produced when both a supraventricular and ventricular impulse combine to produce a hybrid appearing QRS. Here is the algorithm for infants and children. Go ahead and pause here if you need to take a look at this for a moment longer. That concludes tachycardia. We will next address pediatric shock. Thank you.